In this video, I'm going to show you how to use multi-agent capabilities inside of Copilot Studio. So I'll first give you a quick overview of what multi-agent orchestration is inside of Copilot Studio, but just know that I have a dedicated video that goes over all the details of this that I'll link in the video on YouTube here. However, in general, what you're looking at is the ability for Copilot Studio to be able to route conversation based upon the context of the conversation or what you said to different agents of its choice that have been added in. So this is really just the ability for you to have the conversation router route to the correct agent that is going to be used for your potential solution and you can explain when and where to use it. As explained in my education video, you have these two different ways where you have agents that can be brought in that Copilot Studio specifically uses that are built inside of Microsoft or within Copilot Studio. We'll start with demonstrating how you can go build the first one, which is the inline agent capability, which is basically the containerization option. And then we'll also go into the connected agent. And I'll give a quick explanation of why you would do one versus the other, and then we'll take a look at how you actually do those. So if we look at the two different options that we have for using agents within Copilot Studio, you have, of course, you can build an agent, but then we have the ability to do what's called a focused agent or an inline agent capability, which is really gonna give you the ability to say, here's how I can containerize something so that I can say, this is a group of things that should be used in this particular way. It also is where you have like a developer who's just wanting to be able to have it inside of their existing solution. They don't really want it to stand on its own. They just want it to be there for them to be able to be used independently. And because of this, you don't need to separate the configuration settings or say, here's the different connections or how you want to authenticate. It's just going to work for you. The other is that if you don't intend to ever publish this separately and you just want to make it available to the end user as part of the capabilities of the solution that you're working on. So let's take a look at how we would do these type of agents and how we would go and use that inside of Copilot Studio. All right, so now we're inside of Copilot Studio, and this is just a demo agent that I've built uh, to showcase a bunch of different things for some videos that I'm working on. And in this particular agent, I want to show you some things that are in it. So one of the things that's inside of it is going to be that I've got knowledge and I've got Microsoft.com here. Now, I could want to use Microsoft.com for certain pieces of information, but what if I wanted to scope down and say, maybe I want to control a subdomain of Microsoft.com, maybe like support.microsoft.com is where I wanna go for, for support related content for Microsoft. Well, I can go do this now because of the fact that I can group these different pieces in and it will allow me to be able to say, here is the way to be able to go do that. So let's go take a look at specifically how I would go about doing that. So. The first thing is you're going to navigate up to agents and we're going to go ahead and click add. Now this is where we're going to see the different agent capabilities that are available out of the box inside of Copilot Studio today. And in this particular tenant, I'm actually using the production version or production implementation even though you can see that it says preview here, uh, can show in a different video later, I'll show you how to create a preview environment version if you want to. But you'll notice that there are two options here and there's the connect to an existing agent and there's create an agent. So I'm gonna select the top option. That's gonna be my inline agent or my focused agent inside of my solution. And you'll see it, it'll go through a process of creating this capability inside of my agent. And it might take a second or two for this to actually happen. So now that it's created this particular agent, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it some additional information here on what this agent is supposed to do that is part of my solution. So I'll call this Microsoft Product Support. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a couple of pieces of descriptive information. And notice that you can see here the agent chooses based on the description. So I need to give a description as to what it does. And you'll see here I'm giving it information about the specifics of of what this agent does, that it's about Microsoft products and services support. 
And then as we continue down, you'll see here that we have additional details and things like this, and you can add these different things. You can provide priorities and all of these other capabilities uh, to help you with different conditions. Now, I'm going to continue on and add some instructions here just so that that way it understands a little bit more about what it is that it's going to be doing. Now, because of the fact that we've created this, we can add knowledge or tools to this particular agent as well. And in this case, for what we're trying to do, I want to make sure that I go in and add a public website. The public website that we're going to add is we're going to add support.microsoft.com. And by doing this, and I can go in and I'm just going to say I'm the owner of this since I do work for Microsoft. So we can use that owner tag as well to improve the search results. Now, now that we've done that and we've got this all configured and I come in and I say that I want to save uh, this particular piece of information, one thing that you'll know is that I have actually created an implementation uh, prior which will give me uh, some additional tools. And those tools in my overview, so if we go all the way back outside of this agent, so you can see it's added here. But notice that in the agent across the board here, not only do I have an agent connected for product support, but I also have something which is a tool that is connected to be able to get me the status of an order that I have from Microsoft. Now, when I go to go ask questions about this, what I could do is I could just ask a question about Microsoft support and it would go answer a question. But because of the fact that this is going to be able to be orchestrated using our orchestrator, what I want to show you is something a little bit more complex than that. So imagine if I said something more complex, like when will my when will Microsoft order number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine arrive and where can I get drivers for it? So this is actually what I would call a multi-intent question. And when I ask this question, we're going to see a couple of things happen. We're going to see that the orchestration on the backside is going to realize that number one, it needs to go get the order status and answer the question using the order status. But then it's going to say, hey, wait a minute, you're actually asking questions about support related stuff. And I need to go to the Microsoft product support agent to get the information about the drivers for the Surface Pro. And why is it doing that? It's going and getting the information about the Surface Pro because that's what I had in my order. So if we scroll back up to the top, you'll see here that it's saying that it has been shipped uh, and that it's expected and all of this, but it's a Surface Pro is what I've actually got in my order. And with that, it went ahead and said, okay, I'm looking for the driver information for the Surface Pro. So again, this is a great example of how you might decide that inside of your agent itself, you might decide that you want to go and do something like this, where you want to containerize all that product support piece of information separate from other tools and other things that are available. And notice that it can navigate the tools independently of the agent and where to use the agent. So now that we've looked at an inline agent or a focused agent, let's now talk about how to use a connected agent and when you would use one of these. An example of that would be that you have multiple teams that are developing different uh, agents completely independent of one another, and they want to, so you want to use something that someone else has created. Don't think of it as like a component collection where you're building reusable assets that you can adopt at different time. It's literally, I want to take that service over there and just use it completely on its own and someone else is maintaining that service completely independent of me and I have to take the changes whenever they make the change. Now you also need to be able to think about it that that's going to separate the publishing. So that means that someone can publish changes to the agent that you're connecting to independent of the changes to your agent where what we were doing before when we published it everything came together. And then we also have the agents have their own dedicated settings. It allows you to have their own application lifecycle management and it's on authentication. It's on configuration and endpoint, and it stands completely on its own as an independent agent 
without being part of the agent that you're working in. So now we're back over inside of Copilot Studio and let's take a look at how we would work with a connected agent versus an inline agent. And in this case, this is the exact same agent that we were just playing with. And you can see that we even have down here that we've got our Microsoft product support agent. We still have our Microsoft order status, all of these things. But one of the things that we can do now is we can go in and add another agent. Now, in this case, we're going to choose the bottom option here. We're going to choose to connect an existing agent. And in the case of this, we're going to select the Copilot Studio option. Now, there are new and additional options coming in. If you are in the preview stance or the preview implementation, you might see different options here. These are just things that are coming uh, that will allow you to be able to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and select this. Now, once I select this, you're going to see here's a bunch of different options that I have available of different ones that I've created in this particular uh, uh, environment. And one of the ones that I've played with on this YouTube channel is my Porsche 911 manual one. So we're just going to go ahead and select that particular one. And I'm going to show you a couple of things that I want to do as part of this. One of the things I want to do is talk about the description. If you'll notice here, it says allows a user to ask questions about Porsche 911 models. And I'm going to also put in and get order status uh, statuses or status for Porsche orders. Now, by doing this, I'm actually modifying what is in the description that I have built for my Porsche 911 agent, and I'm giving a little bit more information about when to orchestrate to this. Now, the other thing is, is that you'll see, I'm going to pass the conversation history to this agent. Now, if you don't want to pass the conversation history, you cannot do this if you don't want to. Now, by doing that, it just, does this thing have the context of what we're talking about, or does it not? And in some cases, I might want that in other cases I might not want that and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and leave this checked for now and you'll see here that we've got our description here we've got our instructions all of this and we're just going to go ahead and click add agent now because we're not actually provisioning anything we're just connecting these two you'll see that this usually doesn't take quite as long as when we created the inline agent because we're just connecting them we're not necessarily provisioning any additional resources here. Now, the beauty of this is that now that we've got this in, you'll see we've got both our different agents components here. And if you go to the agent screen, you'll see them here as well. And you can turn them on and off and all of these different things. And notice that there's one that's called a child and one that says connected. So that's the difference between the two of these whenever you're building them. And you can see the different ones depending on the in the relationship context. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you a couple of different things that we can do now. Now that we've actually added information about um, this and made it where we can now talk about Porsche 911 items, I can come in and I can say what are the color colors available for the 911. And you're going to see that it's going to go through and it's going to say, hey, actually, I need to check the 911 manual uh, agent. And I'm going to go and go to knowledge within it to get this information. And you'll see that it's actually coming back and it's answering the questions here about this. Now, the other thing is I can even ask a couple of other things. Like I can come in and ask a question such as this, which is about the Porsche order number that, and where can I pick it up? Now, keep in mind that we were talking about Microsoft pro orders earlier. And you'll see here that what it did is it said, oh, you're talking about a Porsche, not talking about a Microsoft order. And I need to go to that agent that is responsible for Porsche orders. And inside of that agent, we actually had a connector and an action that was inside of it that goes in and gets order information about the Porsche that I ordered. And you'll actually see that it goes in and it gives me all the information about uh, that particular order and all of that on the uh, over in the response. Now, this is an example of how you would use each of these different ones. And you'll see that because of the fact that I'm having this conversation about this, if I went back and I say something like, um, 
a question about when will a Microsoft order come in, and we'll just drop that in really quick, you're going to see that the orchestration is going to say, wait a minute, he's talking about the Microsoft order now. And the answer to the Microsoft order is different, even though the order number is the same. It actually understands that we are talking about different things and orchestrate to the correct location. So I hope this video was super helpful for you guys and gives you a little bit better understanding of why you would use each of these things and where they apply. Uh, if you like videos like this, please make sure you like and subscribe to my channel. And as always, you can try Copilot Studio at aka.ms slash try Copilot Studio.